Hello everyone and welcome to the 5th 3DS Max Beginner's Guide video. Today we're going to be learning about the Unwrap UVW modifier. If you don't know what the Unwrap UVW modifier is, it's essentially the first step in texturing your model. This will let us create a 2D flattened image that we can paint on inside a Substance Painter, Quixel, Photoshop, or whatever texturing software you want to use. To get started, I always apply a texture to my model. This is a just a grid with a bunch of letters and colors on it. It's called a UVW material. If you just Google it, you'll find a bunch of them. I'll start by dragging that onto the mesh. We can click on the mesh, add a unwrap UVW, and then click open UV editor. Looking at the mesh in the 3D view, we have some green lines. These represent seams inside of the unwrap, and we'll go over those a little bit later. To show you quickly a few tools that we can use to unwrap, a few quick starters are the explode tools, which are flattened by polygon angles, smoothing groups, material IDs, or custom. So if I just flatten this by angle, we can see that it kind of laid out the model. And you do not want to ship with something like this because this is horrible. It's a good jump start into your model. Flattened by smoothing groups will flatten the mesh based upon the smoothing groups that are applied to it. And then you can kind of work to refine it further from there. I'm not going to use any of these flatten because this is a pretty simple mesh. So I'll hit reset UVWs to go back to default. One thing that I want to make clear is that there are tons of different ways to unwrap and it's going to vary depending on the model that you're working on. I encourage you to look up other methods of UVW unwrapping as I'm not going to cover everything here. This is just my process on UVW unwrapping and it should serve as kind of a jumpstart guide to get you figured out inside of the editor. To get started, what I like to do is add some of my own seams to the model. We can do this with peel mode. So peel mode right here, if I turn that on, it's gonna re fit the entire mesh into the box here. If I hit reset peel, it will get rid of all the seams. There's still a seam here because this is a completely separate object. So just remember that. And then we can go into edge mode and just start clicking on edges and it will automatically start peeling apart the model for us. All I want this unwrap to work is each side of this model is going to be one island. I can just double click here. And what that's done is put an entire seam down the corner here because this is a full loop. I will do that on all of the corners. And then I'll also need to do it at the top here. And every time I double click here to select a loop, it's going to change the unwrap a little bit. Not too concerned about that right now. I just want to get all of these seams added. And we can see that the model is starting to peel apart in our UV editor here. And lastly, I'll add some seams down here. I can actually do this in my side view. Now we can start working on refining the layout and the orientation of everything. This ring hasn't been unwrapped at all. I open the editor again and I select the ring, which is right here. We need to kind of split this guy open. One way to do this is to use the strip method. So if I double click here to select the loop and then select another loop there, I should be able to unfold from loop. Just click that guy. And it'll unwrap that selection right here. And that's all you have to do for the strip. I'll just scale it down. Now we have to work on straightening out some of these pieces and just kind of fixing some issues that we have with them. You'll notice inside here, we have an artifact due to how the unwrap is laid out. This can be fixed by adding some more seams in, which we'll do momentarily. One thing I want to do is remove the pins that the peel has done. So I'll just select all the verts and click remove the pins. And those little blue boxes are gone now. If you don't know what those are, I can add those pins back. So those little blue dots are pins. Those are left over from peel mode. Just get rid of them. Now, since everything is kind of at a weird wonky angle, we can flatten them out by clicking straighten selection, right clicking on them, going to the relax options and hit start relax. If we turn the iterations up 
and the mount should get there pretty quickly. So that did make everything large, but that's honestly not a problem. You can just rotate things. Get these guys out of the way. To select an entire UV island at a time, I have the select by element toggle on, and I can just click on one guy and get it. So this guy still isn't straight at all. I'll hit him with that again. And then go ahead and relax. There we go. So I want the bottoms to be straight, either horizontal or vertical, and then I'm fine with that from there. So this one's fine. There is a tool inside the UV editor that's supposed to basically do this for you, and it is the align to edge. And it actually just doesn't do anything half the time because the tool is garbage. So we're just going to select these two again. Straighten, make a mess out of them. Relax them again. If that fails, we'll just do them one at a time. And problem solved. Now we have them all at different sizes. Not a problem. Select them all and then just hit relax. It'll normalize them to each other. You can just scale those guys down. Actually, everything is massive right now. If we scroll down and hit Pack Normalize, that will automatically scale everything into the UV coordinates. And now we can continue working. I'll rotate these guys. And now you'll see what those seams are actually doing. So right here, that's the edge of this island, and there's a seam right there. So the texture may not line up perfectly there once we get it into game. Not a huge deal, depending on the type of texture you're going to apply. So your seams are going to somewhat be dependent on how you're going to texture the object. Now I'd like to straighten out this guy here. I might be able to get away with using the align. Close enough, and I can just strain it out using rotate. That'll work for our purposes here. Move that guy out of the way. And now I need to unwrap this little guy up here. So I'll just manually add some more seams, and I will use the symmetry group selection. And I can turn on X or Y in this case. So that's mirroring that selection between the two coordinates. So now I have these selected. I want my seams to be on these corners. And then I'll just hit break under explode. And that will add those seams for me. I also need some seams on the inside here. Select all those, hit break once more. I'll turn off the symmetry mode there and just relax this guy down. Get those guys kind of flaring out there. And once that's done, grab you. And now since this guy isn't straight, it's easier to just use the align options. So if I select an edge, hit ring, and then loop. If I click and hold on this vertically align, I'll get this option here, which will allow me to align them vertically in place, which is what I want. Then I'll select this edge, loop, and ring again, and do the same thing but for horizontal, and we get the same, same type of result there. What I would like to fix is this issue here, which will require us to kind of split this apart some. Going back into our UVW editor, let's split this off here. So I'm going to break the bottom base off. I'll just hit break. And I think I also want to change how these are unwrapped. I'll bring these down here. And these can be one UV island. What I'll end up doing with these guys, which is just these bottom pieces, is I'm going to stitch them together right here. And then there'll be one continuous strip. So I can select this guy with island mode off. Or sorry, element mode. And then with this selected, we can see over on the left piece here, this is blue. 
So when you select an edge that's a seam, the edge that it's touching on another island will turn blue. I'll then hit this stitch custom. And if you click and hold on custom, you'll get some stitch options, which will allow you to align and scale clusters. By default, it should do what you want. And now those guys are stitched together. I'll do that with the rest of these. So just stitch custom and then stitch custom. And then if I relax them some, they should straighten out a bit. And there we go. Now those guys are just one island and I can easily manage them. If I want to break them apart, that's not a big deal. I can just select that edge, hit break, and now they're two islands. And this can be useful if you're trying to do better packing later on. Sometimes it's worth it to introduce a seam for higher pixel density. I'll just reattach those by undoing that. And we'll leave those there. After I have part of the mesh unwrapped, I usually move it off to the side and then just kind of leave it there so I know that it's done. That's the bottom. Done with that. This is the top and the ring. Don't need those anymore. And this is this little part here, which is also done a Rooney. So I just like to refine these guys some, mostly this inside bit. So I'll select right there. And I'll just select all of these guys. So what I'm doing is breaking off the bottom part. Hit explode. Now I can just drag these guys away. So I have the top now which is all of these four pieces. And if I wanted to, I could do the same thing with these that I did to those pieces down there. I could select these, hit stitch, and then make these one long piece. But honestly, probably won't be worth it in the long run. So I'll undo that. I can probably pack these easier without having them be one long strip. Now I just like to refine these guys. So the issue here is that I'm getting a stretching effect on these inside faces due to how they're unwrapped. Since these are essentially a square, but they're angled right here, we need them to be unwrapped differently. The easiest way to do this is if I click on these corners and I just break them apart by introducing a seam. So I'll go back to my symmetry mode. I should be able to double click on all of these. It should get them on all the sides for me automatically. So once those are all selected, what I really want is these diagonals. I'll hit break again. And now when I relax these, so take note at how there's this kind of curve here, this angled bit. When I relax this now, the corners are going to split apart. But now that's all straight. And this is what I wanted. The only downside to this is that there is now a seam on the corners. Isn't the end of the world. Again, it's all dependent on how your model looks. So I'll just click that a bunch of times and these are unwrapped. I'm relatively happy with this unwrap. I don't think it's terrible. What I'll do now is I will pack the model. We have tools to help us pack automatically. We can hit rotate, which will rotate clusters to get them to fit better in our UV space. When you pack, everything needs to be inside this UV space. There's a toggle up here that will show multi-tile. And if you move around, it will, you know, change the squares that it's in. One thing to make note of is that it does basically tile across UVs. So this might take a second to wrap your head around. These faces are overlapping with these because it's essentially tiling this square over to this square. And if things overlap, you'll have problems baking. So I'll usually turn this on when I'm packing just to make sure that I don't have anything inside of other UV squares. I usually like to start pack normalize. This will pack everything in pretty nice and neat. If I'd like to get things closer together, I can increase or decrease padding. So now that I decrease padding, things are closer together. 
but the problem is with less padding, you'll introduce some errors with MIP mapping. So you usually want to keep padding at about 0.2 or 0.1. You just don't want objects to be super close together. Now there is some space in this UV that I can kind of manually make things a bit better. For instance, if I want my hook and ring at the top to have more resolution to them, we see that this ring is kind of blurry, but if I start to scale it up, it gets higher detail inside of it. That's because it's taking up more space on the UVW map. So I'll just scale that down. For instance, the bottom of this object probably won't be seen. In most cases, it will be lit black. So what I can do is scale that down because I don't really care about it. I can move that somewhere else and I can scale up some other more important objects of my UV. This is where manual packing can come in handy. If you have a really important asset that you're working on, you may consider just manually packing it all the way. It really depends on how much time you have and how much time you want to spend on wrapping. I'll just scale these up a bit. So this is an all right unwrap. I have some decent padding all along the edges. I think we can go on to a ambient occlusion bake just to make sure that the unwrap is working properly. There's no overlapping areas. I'll create a box just underneath. And the reason I'm creating this box is so I can have shadows in the ambient occlusion bake. Since I work in mostly game art for Source Engine, we bake our ambient occlusion down into our diffuse channel. So bakes are important. I hit M here to open the material editor. I'm going to just drag out a new standard material, set its ambient color to white, and then apply it to the box and to the lamp model. Now I'll hit zero to open render to texture. I'll load a render preset, which is ambient occlusion low using the mental ray renderer. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Select the lamp, scroll down to output, click add, and we want ambient occlusion mental ray. Hit add elements, set the resolution to 1024. That's fine. I'll choose where I want to save it to. Save it on my desktop and I'll hit render. It should fly by. This render preview here is not what it actually looks like. Once it's done, it'll apply the ambient occlusion bake onto our model. To see it better, we can go to flat color for our render mode over here. Instead of shading, shading is going to have some, you know, we can see our smoothing groups and stuff. So if we just go to flat color, we can see the texture that it's baked a lot better. I'll just isolate that selection. And we can see that we have the underside is dark from the ambient occlusion bake. The bottom is also pretty much pitch black. You can adjust that by pulling that bottom box away. This render is super noisy just because of the quality settings that were used. But what I'm really checking for is that there's no dark patches just randomly on other faces. Usually when that happens, it's due to a overlapping UV island, something being stacked or just not packed correctly. This looks pretty good. I'm going to unisolate that, reapply my white texture, and then I'll go ahead and do a full ambient occlusion bake here by using my regular ambient occlusion. Hit load. And then lastly, I'll just set my samples to 128. This is going to take a lot longer, a lot more CPU time, and we'll just hit render. Now that that AO bake is done, I can just apply it onto the model. And there we go. But that's going to do it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial on how to UVW unwrap your model. Once again, I'd just like to say this isn't the definitive guide. There are tons of different ways to unwrap meshes and models. I encourage you to look around at some other channels, see what you can learn about UVW unwrapping. As always, thanks for watching.